So what caused that overnight pump and dump in BTC? I believe I have the answer and it lies within the traditional market. So earlier this morning uh, on Learning Crypto Premium, we were doing our weekly live stream, which we do every Friday morning, where we get together and discuss the week's events and the markets. And this morning, me and Jamie were talking about what happened last night with that pump and dump and what was the cause of it. So Jamie, one of our associates, long-time member, um, he's very into the traditional market side of things, equities, etc., and a self-confessed geek uh, when it comes to all things charts and graphs, etc. And uh, we pointed out that the the pump actually started, if we go down to the lower time frames on BTC, the pump started at around uh, 10 o'clock, was it 8 o'clock last night, rallied for three hours, topped out, and then has obviously come back down this morning. That actually coincided with this big gap on the S&P uh, futures contracts, ES1. As you can see, 8 o'clock, big gap up, and then the next count is at 10 o'clock. So that coincides with the big move on BTC. So bear with me as I explain this because uh, it was actually Jamie that uh, figured it all out. So this is sort of a secondhand explanation. However, what happened is there was a contract change, as you can see here on the S and uh, of the S and P futures contract ES one. So as you can see, Friday eighth September, it went from contract ESU twenty twenty three to ESZ twenty twenty three, and what that means is basically a contract change from the old contracts onto the new contracts. And if you slide up this bar here, you get some more information. What you have here is the futures curve. So if the futures curve is going up, that means that the contract change, you're likely to get uh, an increase in price. And obviously if it's trending down, you're likely to get a decrease in price um, when the contracts change. So it's a way of, you know, uh, people that rely on these markets to be able to have a bit of certainty of what's going forward into the future. Now, these curves can change, of course, with price action, etc. So something worth keeping an eye on. So something you can do in the future when you know that these are coming up. So the next one, as you can see on the chart, the next one is going to be in March, uh, sorry, December. And it's going to switch from the current contracts, which is December 2023, um, ESZ 2023, to the March 2024 contract, so ESH 2024. And the chart in which you can see um, what the next contracts are, if I get rid of that, is ES2. So ES2 is the next lot of contracts. So if you go to ES, uh, if you go to add symbol and you type in ES for uh, S&P futures, you can hit this little arrow here. And as you can see, you get this long list of the next futures. So these futures are the ones that just expired, the ESU 2023, uh, which ex and so the month depicts which uh, month they expire. So they've expired. So this is now ES1, the December 2023 contracts, and ESH 2024 is now the ES2 contracts, which we'll be switching to in December. So what we believe happened um, as we were discussing this, so this was about nine o'clock this morning before we started retracing. So where were we uh, when we were doing the live? It was nine o'clock this morning, um, UK time. So we must have been, I think we were about up here, 26.2. So we're talking about the fact that we had had this little rally, but come right up to resistance here at 26.3. We had this little wick formed and we were, as I say, we're about here at 26.2. And we sort of thought to ourselves, the reason why or theorized what this could be is that this happened obviously after the US close. It's BTC or crypto, it's an illiquid market. Uh, there's a lot of pent up retail um, hope for a big move. You know, we've been chopping around for the last week or so. And so whenever you see like a move in, a strong move in one direction, everyone thinks that this is the big move, similar to what we got back here on the uh, ETF news. And so I think what happened uh, is that people, it's an uneducated, fairly uneducated um, and illiquid market with crypto. They saw that the S&P had gapped up over 1%, almost 1.5%. And so they jumped in, um, FOMO'd in, which caused the price to, to go up. And then consequently, um, once it topped out, maybe once people realized, or maybe once smart money saw what was going on, um, it got sold back into. So what will be interesting is what happens when the US market opens up in a few hours, what they make of all this, 
um, but it's just a similar pattern of what's happened the past couple of weeks. Every time there's a bit of strength, a bit of good news, a bit of momentum just gets sold straight back into and we come straight back down. So it's been a very painful couple of weeks uh, trying to trade this, just absolute chop, no clear direction. Um, and even a couple of days ago on Wednesday, where you saw this volatile candle here, um, that was on the back of uh, an Ethereum ETF, a spot ETF um, application. But again, you know, Ethereum had a nice little pop and just got sold straight back into it. And, the, you know, the daily candle actually closes a doji um, after all that good news. So it's a very tricky market at the moment. As I say, good news just keeps getting sold into, can't form any kind of momentum. And nothing has really changed on the higher time frames either. If we take a look at it, just nothing. But you plenty of wicks, um, so intraday action, but the, day, the you know, the opens and closes um, are just not really moving. BTC still above that monthly level of 25.2, which is all important. Weekly not really moved and daily, as I say, just stuck in between this mini range 26.3, 25.8. Ethereum, very similar, uh, higher time frames. It's still below that 1721 level. Really needs to reclaim that on the monthly. Um, on the weekly, again, just looking quite weak. I think we come down to 1370. And on the daily, I thought we were going to break down once we got this daily close below support on Friday the 1st of September, below 16.35, lowest daily close since back in March, but it's been chopping around. So look at the volatility, just wicks, wicks, wicks. And again, you know, last night got a nice daily close back above 16.35, but then again today, just sold straight back into. And ETH BTC as well, very interesting chart. Looked like it was trying to make a breakout earlier in the week, slapped back down yesterday. If we go onto the weekly, as you can see, still within this bearish trend line, right up against support as well, 0.62. So, Hoping this resolves, or it's got to resolve in the next week or two, whether we get a break out or break down. Of course, a break up would be very positive for alts. A break down, um, they'd be bleeding, particularly against BTC, but probably in the US pair, uh, their dollar pairs as well. Um, of course, if we get any sort of downside movement from BC and ETH, they're also going to suffer. Bitcoin dominance, as I've said for the last few weeks, this is support until proven otherwise. This previous monthly range high come down into support. If we get a monthly close by 48%, that's going to be really good for alts and ETH BTC will probably rock it. Um, but for now, as I say, until proven otherwise, this is support, another higher low and potentially uh, more of a rally on Bitcoin dominance, which can happen whether BTC goes up or down, let's not forget. So uh, let's just quickly go over some altcoins and really the message is the same as it was on Monday. They are sat on uh, very important high time frame supports, um, which if lost will be a long way down. However, don't discount the fact that they are very, very, very far away from their all time highs, much closer to a bottom than the top. That's for sure. So if you haven't already bought some bags of the uh, you know projects you like, you might want to consider just starting to dollar cost average in um, because you know you never know this may work. I personally don't think this is the bottom for alts. I think we've got a little um, maybe one more leg down to go but that doesn't mean I'm not still uh, buying some of the bags that I like for the future because at these prices uh, it's kind of crazy not to. But enough waffling let's get on to the analysis. So um, as I say, it's probably going to be short and sweet because there's not really much to say. ADA trying to reclaim this daily range low at 25 cents. Finally got a daily close above it on Tuesday. Didn't do anything on Wednesday, which was the ETF day. Thursday, just about managed to hold on to the daily level. And then today, boom, straight back down. So not all that convincing for a long. Uh, AVAX, again, it's clinging on to this monthly um, support. Um, if it loses that, you know, you're know, you looking at all the way down to $5, which could be a 50% drop, which would be huge. Even on the weekly, there's no real um, structure there, apart from maybe these two wicks down here at $9.30. Um, if they hold, uh, but in terms of trade, not really anything there. My two levels to watch out for were is either $9.45 for a long or $10.87 for a short. Um, we've not had anything happen this week. BNB, unfortunately I missed this move um, when it went to 219, just didn't expect it to shoot up that quickly and come back down. So didn't jump on that, but that was my level for uh, a short. Um, if we break down, there's a potential opportunity for a bounce here at 189, um, which is, you know, below this huge weekly level, which I've talked about before, lose that and BNB could be in for a, for a big drop. Um, but again, we, we saw that scare back in June and then we rallied off that. So that's what that level is for at 189. Could get a potential bounce there. Um, you know, low risk, high reward, very tight stop if it gets down there. And then if it bounces, then you're going to be um, in a good in good shape. But as I say, no real trade this week apart from that, but I missed that. 
on to Matic. Um, done absolutely nothing this week. Look at that. You can't really trade that unless you're a scalper. So nothing interesting there. Dots the same. Was waiting for it to get above $4.27 for a potential long. Look at the amount of attempts it had to get above it. Finally got above it yesterday, but look at what's happened today. And of course, based on what I believe was the reason for the pump, which is I think that an uneducated and a liquid um, retail driven um, FOMO buy or FOMO buying, I should say, um, was what pumped Bitcoin. And now it's just going to get sold back into, especially when the US come back. So I'm sat on the sidelines for today uh, and over the weekend. I'll come back to the charts Monday once everything's figured out. But as you can see, no real trading opportunity there, I don't think. Unless, of course, it does hold. And if you want to jump in on a weekend, uh, so be it. Same with Near Look. It was stuck in this mini range all week between $1.10 and $1.45. Finally got a daily close above it yesterday. And uh, it's looking like it's going to try and close above again today, which could be a potential long. Um, but as I say, waiting for that daily and weekly closes before I enter any positions next week. But as you can see, unless you're a scalper, there's no trade on this week at all. It's just ping-ponging between two very uh, tight levels. I mean, what is the price difference? Like 3%. Again, you got to be a scalper to be taking advantage of that. And then uh, VeChain again, just sort of chopping around this big monthly range low, uh, 0.015. Long way down if it loses that. On the weekly, you've got this level here at 0.014 for a potential bounce, but we've used this level quite a few times, so who knows how strong that's going to remain. On the daily, you've got a potential short level there at 0.016. Um, in terms of a long, you are really just looking at that weekly level, but again, nothing happened this week which was tradable. And then Zill, the only one that's looked half decent this week, got a move above this, uh, so it's sat on this big monthly level down here at 0.016. Um, so, you know, looks good for a bounce, but it hasn't really done anything yet. On the weekly, again, as you can see, it's a big, strong level, but again, not really moved. On the daily, we got above this level at 0.016, um, held it for a couple of days, and again, today, it's retesting its support. But what you want to see is you want to see it close above, quick retest, and then off it goes, but it just hasn't really happened um, so yeah, not looking too good. So I personally haven't been doing any trading this week, but there has been trading uh, in the Earn Why Learn Premium. We've got a members trade chat, um, which is open to everyone that's a premium member. And we've also got Premium Plus, um, which we're trialing out and hoping to launch soon, uh, which will have lots more trades in it. We've got three junior analysts on board at the moment, and we all trade on different timeframes, which is great. So we've got a scalper, we've got a couple of intraday uh, traders, and then you've got myself that does sort of the longer term, higher time frame stuff. So amongst us, we do uh, have plenty of trades coming in thick and fast so it's a it's a really good opportunity to jump in either copy some trades follow along or of course put in your own analysis into the members trades and we feed off each other uh, help each other improve and you know hopefully help each other make a bit of money as well so yeah it's a really good community vibe so if you're interested follow the link below there's a free trial all that good stuff and of course the um you know, the weekly lives that we have on Friday morning. We do monthly lives as well, um, where we talk about trading and the Earn Why Learn reviews and all that good stuff. And of course, you get access to the Earn Why Learn as well. So yeah, that's it from me. Have a good weekend. We'll see what happens with the US market this afternoon. And uh, I look forward to reviewing it all on Monday. So have a good weekend and I'll catch you then.